Basketball is a team sport where teammates share the ball in a fluid motion, giving some players the opportunity to stand out and become stars. But every decade or so, there are a lonely few who not only aspire for greatness, but end up changing the way the game is played. So today, we'll be looking at the top five most efficient NBA players who aspired for greatness and changed the way basketball is played from 1995 to 2000. But first, please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these videos for the 2000s and 2010s. For a player efficiency rating, we'll be using ESPN columnist Hollinger's PER rating. Usually a player with a rating over 30 would be considered an all-time great. A player between 25 and 29 would be labeled a superstar, while a rating of 20 to 24 just a star. And there are three variables that can affect the player's ranking on this list. Number one, the number of times the player has made it into the top five from 1995 to 2000. Number two, the ranking of the player in the top five each year. And three, the overall PR rating of the player from 1995 to 2000. And now our honorable mentions who were just shy of making the list. First off, Tim Duncan, one of the two twin towers of the early Spurs days. This U.S. Virgin Islander who started playing basketball in his teenage years developed into an incredible basketball player. He may not have been the flashiest player on the court, but he sure was a player you can rely on, night in and night out, making the top five in two years of the late 1990s. Making his debut in the 1997-1998 season, Duncan averaged 21 points, 12 rebounds, and 2.5 blocks while shooting a highly efficient 55% from the floor. And as a rookie, started at power forward in all 82 games for the Spurs. These performances helped him achieve the highest rookie honor there is, the season's Rookie of the Year award. Perhaps Duncan's worth was truly evident during his sophomore season. In the shortened 1998-1999 season, when he averaged 21.7 points, 11.4 rebounds, 2.4 assists, 2.5 blocks on 49.5% shooting in 39.3 minutes of play. Even though these numbers aren't breathtaking, he truly shined in the 1999 playoffs specifically in the conference semifinals against the Lakers and NBA Finals against the New York Knicks, when he averaged a mere 28 points, 12 rebounds, 3 assists, and 2 blocks per game. These spectacular performances earned him his first ever NBA championship, as well as the Finals MVP award over his Spurs teammate, Hall of Famer David Robinson, and all this in only his second NBA season. In the 1999-2000 NBA season, Tim Duncan improved on his numbers from the previous year, but his shining moment of that season came during the 2000 All-Star Game, recording 24 points, 14 rebounds, 4 assists on a near-perfect 86% shooting from the field. This performance helped him win his first ever NBA All-Star Game MVP award, which he co-shared with Shaquille O'Neal. And another honorable mention, Grant Hill, nicknamed Mr. Nice because of his 6 foot 8 point forward frame with an ability to add flair to the game with his silky smooth crossover and strong drives to the basket. This Duke standout and Rookie of the Year winner made the top five in two seasons, averaging 22 points, 8 rebounds, 6.5 assists, and 1.6 steals on 48% shooting from 1995 to 2000. One of his greatest abilities on the court was to grab a defensive rebound, go coast to coast, and either finish on a drive or get to the line. On the lane. What stands out the most is Grant Hill's astounding rebounding ability, especially for a small forward. In the 1995-1996 season, Grant Hill averaged 20 points, 10 rebounds, and 7 assists per game. 
He would rebound like a power forward, but assist like a guard. And that is exactly what made Grant Hill special, flirting with a triple-double every single night. Locked down to 10. Grant Hill on the penetration. He led the league in triple doubles for three straight seasons from 1995 to 1998. At number five, Alonzo Mourning, more commonly known as Zoe. This blocking machine was a force to be reckoned with on the defensive end, spending most of the late 90s with the Miami Heat after being traded by the Charlotte Hornets in November of 1995. Zoe made the top five two years in a row, ranking fourth in the shortened 1998-99 season and then being the third most productive player in the 1999-2000 season. During these two seasons, Morning averaged 21.1 points, 10.1 rebounds, a league-leading 3.8 blocks on 53.7% shooting from the field. In addition to leading the league in blocks per game, so also led the league in total blocks for the season with 294 swats. These performances did not go unnoticed, as the league recognized his strong play on the defensive end of the floor and nominated Zoe the Defensive Player of the Year in 1999 and 2000. In addition to winning the Defensive Player of the Year honors, Zoe came in second in 1999 and third in the 2000 MVP voting. And with an average PER rating of 25.16, Zoe placed in fifth on this list. At number four, David Robinson, the Admiral who was in the prime of his career in the late 90s. He made the top five four times and coming in first in the 1995-1996 season ahead of even Michael Jordan. In the lone season D-Rob ranked first, he had averages of 25 points on 51% shooting, 12 rebounds, 3 assists and 3 blocks. That is one very dominant season, as he led the league in free throws made and attempted, as well as defensive rebounds and total rebounds. He also led the league in defensive rating and defensive win shares, which shows the number of wins contributed by a player due to defense. However, this statistic of dominance was not enough for him to win the 1995-1996 MVP award as he came in second in the MVP voting behind Michael Jordan. During the 1996 and 1998 playoffs, the Admiral had a hard time getting through Carl Malone in the Utah Jazz as he could not maintain his statistical dominance of the regular season. His numbers would dwindle even more due to reduced playing time in the 1999 NBA playoffs, where he averaged about 15.5 points and 10 rebounds per game. This, however, did not face him, as he had a well-rounded twin tower alongside him in Tim Duncan and a very strong supporting cast to help lead the San Antonio Spurs to their first ever NBA championship. Playing second fiddle to the finals MVP, Tim Duncan, also did not phase him, as he was content with winning his first ever championship. And with an average PER rating of 26.68, the Admiral placed fourth on this list. At number three, Carl Malone, the mailman who was able to turn back the clock and push his way into the top five, even though he was past his prime, being in his mid-30s, aged 32 to 36 to be more precise. Nevertheless, Carl was not only able to make the top five every season, but he also managed to miss only two games in five full seasons. Talk about having heart and the will to play for your team night in and night out. Out of the five NBA seasons, 
His best season was in the 1996-97 season, when the mailman averaged 27.4 points, 10 rebounds, 4.5 assists, 1.4 steals, and shooting 55% from the field. In that same season, Malone led the league in two-point field goals made, and even led the league in free throws made and attempted three years in a row. The cherry on the cake for the mailman came at the end of the 1996-97 season when he was named the NBA's most valuable player. He came in second in the MVP voting for the 1997-98 NBA season and then won the award again in the shortened 1998-99 season due to the lockout. The main reason he won the award was due to his win share contribution where he led the league again in a season where MJ had already retired for the second time. Even though the mailman played with heart every single night for his team, he could never get over the hump to win an NBA championship. The closest he ever got was in the 1997 and 1998 playoffs, where he faced off against Jordan and the Bulls in the finals, both times losing 4-2. Even though he averaged a double-double in both finals, with averages of 24 points, 10 rebounds and 3.7 assists, Malone could never find a way to dethrone Michael Jordan and the Bulls. And with an average PER rating of 27.10, the mailman placed third on this list. At number two, Michael Jordan, considered to be the GOAT by most basketball enthusiasts, was a player who time and time again managed to not only make the top five, but consistently be at the very top. But perhaps, it's possible that in the late 90s, MJ did not need to push himself as much in the regular season. Not because he didn't want to, but because there was no need to. He knew that the only time that it truly mattered was in the playoffs, with the Larry O'Brien trophy waiting for him at the end of a tunnel. And it's true, MJ came back a different player, where his numbers were a tad lower, resulting in a decreased player efficiency rating. Even though his numbers dipped, he still managed to lead the league in scoring for three straight seasons, from 1996 to 1998, when he averaged 30.4 points in 1996, 29.6 points in 1997, and 28.7 points in 1998. His rebounding numbers dipped to about six rebounds a game, down from seven rebounds from previous years, and his assists dropped as well to about four per game, down from six in previous years. His normal average of 2.8 steals per game also dropped to about 1.7 per game. And these averages of 29 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, and 1.7 steals at the age of 33 for any other player would be phenomenal. But for MJ, our expectations have always been higher. But the reality is that he had a better supporting cast this time around, from the hot hand of Tony Kukoc and stellar performances of Ron Harper and to the kamikaze rebounding of Dennis Rodman. And how can we forget one of the best sidekicks in the NBA ever, Scottie Pippen, who got used to the idea of carrying the load when MJ needed a rest. Jordan, as the captain and leader of the team, knew what he needed to do to win. And at times, that meant deferring to other players and allowing them to help him get to the top. And MJ, as the leader, also knew to set an example by playing in all 82 games for three straight seasons, and at the same time leading the league in field goals made and attempted, two-point field goals made and attempted, and total points scored. In the 1995-96 season, when the Bulls won, at the time, a record-shattering 72 wins in a single season, MJ led the league in offensive win shares, as well as total win shares contributing the most wins for one team compared to any other player in the NBA. And because of these contributions, he won the 1995-96 Most Valuable Player Award. He also dazzled in the 1996 All-Star Game, scoring 20 points and grabbing 4 rebounds, and was named the All-Star Game's MVP. Not only did he manage to win both MVP awards in one season, but
But Jordan also managed to lead his team to a fourth championship, and at the same time winning his fourth finals MVP award. He came back the next year in the 1996-97 season and led the league again in offensive win shares and total win shares, but this time was snubbed for the MVP award, which Malone got instead, and MJ never forgot. And this is when MJ's true dominance was on full display, when he averaged 32.3 points, 7 rebounds and 6 assists in the 1997 NBA Finals against Karl Malone and the Utah Jazz. These finals averages are reminiscent of the Jordan we all admired in the early 90s, and his heroics helped lead the Bulls to their fifth NBA championship, and at the same time, his fifth finals MVP award. During the 1997-98 NBA season, Jordan had his most memorable one, winning every possible award there is. The NBA's regular season most valuable player award, All-Star Games most valuable player award, Finals Most Valuable Player Award, and his sixth NBA championship. And all of these awards are won based on merit and are therefore warranted. However, Jordan was most lethal in the 1998 NBA Finals when he averaged 33.5 points, 4 rebounds, 2.3 assists, and 1.9 steals in six grueling games. He was an offensive juggernaut, and his incredible offensive display shows just how determined Jordan was in winning his sixth NBA championship and sixth finals MVP award. And with 37 points, as Utah falls behind now for the first time since midway through the second quarter. And he accomplished it all at the age of 34, finishing off the Jazz to complete his second three-peat. and reaching everlasting basketball immortality. Even though with an average PER of 27.45, Jordan ranked second on this list, he is still, overall, in my book, by far the greatest basketball player to ever play the game. At number one, Shaquille O'Neal, this late 90s superhuman was entering his prime during a time when the GOAT himself was finishing up his illustrious career. And during the five seasons he made the top five, Shaq Diesel ranked first three times in a row from 1998 to 2000 and even had the highest PR rating compared to any other player in Jordan's final season. These statistics show that he was the one who took over the NBA when MJ retired for the second time and Shaq's presence can be felt right underneath the rim. In the three seasons he ranked first, Shaq played for the Lakers out west, and he led the league with the highest field goal percentage and two-point field goal percentage. He also led the league in points per game in the 1999-2000 season with a 29.7 average. In addition, he averaged 13.6 rebounds, 3.8 assists, and three blocks per game. Shaq was so dominant this season that he led the league in offensive win shares, defensive win shares, and total win shares by a large margin. And in the same season, he also managed to score a career high 61 points in a single game. Oh, man. 61 points. 
This 1999-2000 NBA season was a memorable one for Shaq, that not only did he win the league's most valuable player award for the season, he also co-shared the All-Star Game MVP honors with fellow NBA star Tim Duncan. Shaq scored 22 points, grabbed 9 rebounds, dished 3 assists and blocked 3 shots to help the West come out with a win. He got one of those rings, so I'm taking this. <laughs> But the cherry on top came in the 2000 NBA playoffs, where Shaq along with Kobe Bryant combined forces to become the greatest one-two punch in the modern era of the NBA. Their selflessness helped the Lakers get to the 2000 NBA Finals, where Shaq averaged 38 points, 16.7 rebounds, 2.3 assists and 2.7 blocks per game. And with the help of Kobe's natural instincts of ball handling, and vision, the Shaq-led Lakers defeated Reggie Miller and the Indian Pacers 4-2, and Shaq finally won his first ever NBA Championship and Finals Most Valuable Player Award. And with an average PER rating of 28.69, Shaq Diesel placed first on this list. Now a recap of all five players, D. Rob was fourth over Zoe because he had better rankings in the top five, Malone was third because his PR rating was lower than Jordan's and Shaq's. Even though Jordan won more than Shaq, Shaq ranked first three years in a row and also during Jordan's final NBA season where MJ ranked fourth. Shaq also had a higher average PR rating compared to Jordan, MJ is the better player compared to Shaq and is still the GOAT no matter what, uh, even though he ranked second on this list. If you like this video and want to see more of these videos for the early 2000s, late 2000s and 2010s, please subscribe to our channel, Interest. Thank you.